from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, this is a Cube conversation from our Boston area studio. I'm Stu Miniman, and joining for this deep dive into partnership discussions is Brian Regan, the CMO of Actifio. Brian, great to see you, and happy 2020. Great to see you, Stu. Thanks. All right, so uh, we had a conversation uh, with yourself and Ashok talking about 10C, uh, so some of the activities, the general momentum of Actifio, uh, but really want to spend a little bit of time talking about partnerships. So uh, Actifio being a software company mm -hmm. always has had uh, a number of partnerships. Uh, so you know, w why don't we talk a little bit of just uh, the philosophy of the company and you know, how important uh, that is for you know, technology partnerships as well as the go-to-market. Absolutely, and uh, I think we, you know, in 2019, um, we really um, uh, increased our focus, um, our investments, um, and really our entire company alignment um, towards five types of partners specifically. Um, one was a relatively new partnership for us, which is a software partnership with IBM uh, and their data and AI uh, division of IBM. Um, under Arvind Krishna and Rob Thomas that uh, we really, um, they OEM our product to go after the test data management uh, market opportunity um, and really uh, become a data platform for a lot of their initiatives that involve Watson and, and analytics as well as test data management. Yeah. Um, that so was a, a huge new partnership for us in 2019. Well, of course, a new area of partnership because IBM, I understand, is probably the, the longest and oldest partnership that Actifio has had. Absolutely, so the software group was probably the last group that we have partnered with in, uh, inside of the IBM Corporation. But um, we saw incredible traction throughout the year, great pipeline growth from literally the beginning of the, the ink signing the, the paper, um, and have a, a roster of incredible logos to show for it over the last 12 months. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting to look if uh, you talk about software and how AI fits to it. That was 2019, one of the things we just said, uh, not just, you know, okay, what is AI or along that spectrum, but, you know, how do these things stitch together? Together, everything to uh, am I a feed for the training algorithms or are there other things I can do? So it uh, so sounds like you found some areas where customers are going to be uh, working at leveraging uh, your solution. Absolutely, and certainly with IBM's acquisition of Red Hat and their embrace of uh, containers and Kubernetes, um, that application modernization intersection point where we can bring data into containers is going to be a big theme for us in 2020 as well. Okay, e exciting stuff. So uh, that, that's on the software piece. Yep. Uh, so if you have software, uh, hardware still matters in 2020. See, it turns out we still need to run things on uh, <laughs> servers and storage so uh, and, and switches and the like. So um, we're uh, fortunate to have partnered with Dell EMC as uh, one of our focus infrastructure partners. Um, we have uh, reference architectures for converged infrastructure using the rail and the rack designs on the VX Flex OS underneath. Um, and really going after the database cloning market opportunity. So um, bringing a, uh, essentially a data center pod architecture with Actifio software running inside um, to power these databases of service um, opportunities that exist in the large enterprises. All right, uh, it, it, interesting, you know, EMC was not one that I would have thought would have been the first one to partnership. Yeah. Dell EMC with a much broader portfolio uh, so it seems a natural fit. Absolutely, and, and we were excited actually to, um, based on client demand, and to also introduce the support to write to data domain. So we can actually support data domain, uh, es essentially we treat it almost like an object target, um, to uh, increase uh, the useful life and actually increase the power of data domain within these broader uh, infrastructures that uh, the enterprise clients have. Yeah, I had a great conversation with the Shook talking about one, one of the things about 10C is we've known for a long time that object storage is so important for the storage industry and where Absolutely. we want to go, but customers shouldn't have to think about it. It's right. just how um, we, we, we enable that, and that leads up to, of course, cloud is a big piece of, of, of 10C there. Um, so, so where are the important partnerships? Uh, for, for, from a cloud standpoint. So certainly um, all of the clouds for us in our multi-cloud uh, effort are important. We, we support seven of the hyperscalers um, and, and certainly you know, Alibaba Cloud, IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud, VMware Cloud, in addition to the three that people think about most. Um, but from a go-to-market standpoint, we are probably the most embedded with Google Cloud over the last year, uh, year to 18 months. Um, again, we've aligned a lot of both go-to-market but also engineering um, 
efforts to make sure that we're supporting Google Cloud in the best way possible, bringing the most compelling um, and differentiated offerings, particularly for database workloads, um, for backup, DR, and ultimately database cloning. Well, congratulations, important partnership, especially when you talk about that engineering standpoint. Uh, Google is not one just to make, oh, you know, <laughs> we, we made a handshake and it's good. Right. Really, they dig in from an engineering standpoint. Absolutely. And we know that Google makes the smartest stuff out there. <laughs> They'll tell you that. Uh, yes. So if you, you've gone through the ringer on that, uh, that, that really speaks to the architectural uh, Absolutely. Is, is piece of the environment. And, and credit to Ashok and the entire engineering organization. I mean, that is, to your point, very much an engineering first and then go to market second type of relationship, and we're delighted to be in the go to market side of that. Okay, uh, go to market uh, then is uh, probably another piece of uh, Absolutely. Partnership. So the last two types of partners that we're really focused on for 2020, and we certainly um, got very serious in 2019, one is global systems integrators. Um, and TCS has really emerged as a, a really key partner for us um, in that landscape. When we think about the enterprise accounts that we target, you know, a billion and up in revenue, they're in every single one of them. Um, and um, we have several wins that we can look back on 2019 and credit um, their influence. Um, they are certainly helping the application modernization initiatives within all of these enterprises um, and partnering with Actifio to really bring a data management and a test data management capability to bear um, really was an important step for us in 19 that we hope to accelerate in 2020. Um, and then the, the last piece, um, and uh, last but not least, um, from a go-to-market standpoint is the channel. Um, and you know, important channel partners, whether it's um, Trace3, particularly on the West Coast, whether it's Data Trend you know, from the Midwest and East Coast, um, these types of channel partners have really helped us um, it, you know, become embedded in some of the largest accounts in, in North America as well as globally, um, and um, really are the, the trusted advisor inside of those accounts that we want to continue to enable with compelling differentiated offerings like 10C. Yeah, there, there were a lot of transformations going on in the channel. They were all trying to figure out how they live in that multi-cloud world. Uh, seems a natural fit for those that are thriving and surviving Absolutely. Uh, in this era that uh, th those would be the ones that you'd be working with. Absolutely. So as a software company, you know, the part of our power is the uh, ecosystem power, and by, we believe that by continuing to foster these multifaceted relationships, um, they all have uh, actually really fascinating benefits across the board. The IBM relationship, for example, has ecosystem benefits in their channel, and their systems integrators. The Dell EMC relationship has you know, ripple effects into their channel and their distribution, uh, po points of distribution. So um, we believe it's a, a very complementary ecosystem that we're we're building, we're excited at the possibility of an even stronger 2020 because of it. Awesome, the, the one that you mentioned actually in our earlier conversation, talking about Actifio ah, yes. and 10C, yes. uh, SAP of course, yes. uh, big, big important partner also. A, a huge, uh, it's a, an important partner from a standpoint of it's uh, maybe the most critical workload in most enterprises that use SAP. Uh, and being a part of their technology stack inside of the HANA Enterprise Cloud is a you know, critical capability for us, but it's also an important point of distribution as um, they go out to their enterprise customers and are looking to become more relevant in a broader sense of data management. So we're um, certainly excited about the work that we're doing with them. We're delighted about the influence that they've had in terms of our roadmap and pushing our uh, platform to be even more capable, particularly for HANA workloads. All right, uh, a lot of different pieces, Brian. Uh, congratulations on all that uh, happened in 2019 and looking forward to watching the momentum in 2020. Thanks, Stu, looking forward to being back. All right, uh, lots more coverage from us at thecube.net, of course. We'll be at lots of shows. Feel free to reach out on Twitter. I'm at Stu, and thank you for watching theCUBE.